Welcome and great to have you in the session. Today we continue with the Move to Cloud ERP Practical Guide, the free webcast series that provides comprehensive overview on why the cloud ERP transformation is essential for companies, how it can be successfully implemented, and what support is available to accelerate your transformation journey. Our schedule currently includes almost 30 weekly live sessions structured around why, how, and what targeting global audience. Make sure you are registered and get access to the collection of assets such as recordings, PDFs, and other formats, as well as updates on the topics. I will post the full schedule of the serials later in the chat. The session today will focus on SAP's own transformation journey. The main question that, we will, that will be covered are why SAP is transforming, what goals have been defined, how is the transformation being executed, what are the lessons learned, and what successes have been achieved so far. Monica Myerska Grohola, who is co-lead co Customer Transformation Group at SAP will lead us through the session. My name is Larissa Brinkman from the SAP Global User Groups Organization, and I'm your host. Please post your questions via Q&A tool, and we will be happy to answer them later. This session is being recorded, and the recording will be made available to the registrants of the series. But now let's get started, and over to you, Monica. Thank you, Larissa, and thanks for having me here. Um, so I'm really happy to share with you our own things from SAP's transformation journey, which is obviously linked also to the move uh, to ERP discussion. Um, so I'm looking forward to have it also as an interactive session. We prepared some polls, um, and we are happy also to uh, answer your question in the chat. So feel free to use the chat function, um, like Larissa mentioned. Um, the way I want to start the presentation is also um, the customer transformation group, where which I'm co-leading, uh, although it says customer, because our focus is to exchange the learnings, what we have gained on our own transformation, and as SAP is um, multiple years already on that journey uh, with other companies, that's why you see the customer name in it. Where are we organizationally located? We are part of a, a function which has been um, recently formed um, or enhanced, which is the corporate process and IT organization, uh, which is part of the office of the CEO board area. So within SAP, we established the role of transformation and execution in a more neutral instance, which is the office of the CEO, overlooking and, and supporting the business areas um, on the transformation journey itself with everything, uh, all components, the business aspect, the system aspect, the data aspect, as well as the uh, people aspect, uh, um, as the dimensions are key for us on, on our journey to consider as a whole and not looking in one or the other. How I want to start the session is really to, to get um, a little bit of your feedback on um, your thoughts. How many transformation projects um, do you think um, uh, are failing in a transformation because we see uh, still a significant number of projects which are failing. Um, and the question to you, and please type it into the chat, how much, how many percentage do you think are failing? Just to get a feeling on it. You can use the chat function to type it in. Is it around the lower numbers of percentage? Is it higher? Okay, see it's 30 to 50. We saw in another panel discussion, all the percentages varying from 10% as an indication all the way to 90. So I'm eager to, to read here your feedback. What do you think? How many are failing? The chat is on the bottom of the screen. 
One second. It says chat. I have chat disabled, however. Oh, okay. okay, this is some technical uh, unexpected. Um, okay, Monica, maybe just um, continue with your estimation and I will check why the chat function is disabled. Sorry for that. Okay, good. Perfect. Um, so actually the number a couple of years ago was um, a very, very shocking high number, which was up to 90% of transformation projects which are failing. It um, dro dropped um, currently and we are currently um, in the up to 70%. So we still see more and more projects succeeding, but it's still a very significant high number on it. So I want to link this, the reasons for these kind of failures also um, to our learnings to support you on, on, on your journey, on your company's journey um, with um, uh, with overcoming uh, with certain practices uh, these kind of challenges. Uh, because the interesting one is that these challenges are not related to a specific industry or to a specific um, region or country. Uh, we share pretty the same, right? even SAP uh, more on the software side and um, um, the others more on the um, uh, on a production uh, side, we do see um, similar challenges uh, facing transformation projects. Um, with that, um, that would be Larissa to you in terms of getting to the next question, which is um, what in your organizations are the, um, the top reasons of failure? Let me see, because it's not uh, changing. Um, and then I can link it also to the exchange of our company. So in this case, we would leverage the online poll, not the Q&A. Larissa, if you could open that poll to yes. get the feedback. So we prepared five categories. Uh, so you can, you have multiple choices just to uh, mirror it into your organization. What are the top challenges you are currently facing in your business transformation? I've opened the poll. So answers are coming in, but we'll need to give some time for the participants yes. to drop their answers. By the way, in the meanwhile, I have uh, an able chat again. I don't understand why it was disabled, but uh, in IT, you always have these uh, surprises. It's fine. Okay, we see a lot of activities happening. Great results uh, on really getting an, a, a feeling um, for, for that round. Um, leaving it for Maybe, another yeah, minute, another. 30 seconds, and then we can see because I don't see the numbers much moving anymore. Um, I can end the poll and share the results so and you can comment. Okay, perfect. That. Yes. So you can see the shared results. I do now stop sharing, right? Uh, no, are you, can you see the, the results? I can see it. Uh, do the T, do the, um, I can participants uh, in the call see it? Yes. Okay, good. So um, the one interesting one, um, and this is really something with mir mirrors also feedback from our exchanges we have done in our uh, transformation business network. We have over 400, uh, 4,000 um, participants across executives and experts is the topic of strategy definition, um, which is uh, really interesting that it has been chosen here. Why? Because often when it comes to implementations or tool discussions, uh, we are right away directly jumping into the execution mode and not necessarily um, rethinking what is the future NOSTA of that company, what kind of strategic goals we are trying to achieve on the business side first, um, in order to then derive how technology can help us to enable these goals. So it's uh, very interesting to see that uh, your top votes are actually the strategy and the vision. 
And this is really one of the key learnings. I will also double click on it later on. Why it's so critical to have that strategic definition um, done um, and, and reserve some time on that, including the, the, the management and executive backing on, on it. Um, what we see then also uh, followed uh, here a little bit in the, in the distance, but still is the topic of measurement, which is very interesting because usually the, the top votes are strategy, methodology and implementation. Uh, measurement, a significant number growing, what we observe is that it's not just around the business goals, but how we measure the outcomes, tangible outcomes, qualitative and quantitative. Um, to really, on the one hand side, get the back um, the, the the sponsorship from the executives on on business cases and so on, but also on the long run to see outcomes to the organization back on what is the value uh, behind it. Um, and this is a very tough one um, to 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 introduce because you you need to think of KPIs and measurements. Um, to be defined, which are not too strategic, but also not too operational. And on the other hand side, that they also represent a more transformational character. So uh, great to see here that this community um, is having that measurement element already on the radar. Um, uh, and it's super, super critical also on our own journey on the SAP side. And then obviously transformation methodology and uh, fully agree. This is really one of the key successes to find the right methodologies um, to get the strategy translated, operationalized, and then executed. Um, because um, it, those are elements like how to set up a project. It's about how to um, build up a strong governance uh, around it. And then also mechanics on the IT, on the business, on the process side um, to get ideas uh, executed. So I will double click on it in our uh, in our journey uh, learnings. Um, and just to mirror it out also now to the to the top reasons for failure, uh, what I just mentioned on the on our network side. So if you're also interested to join that network in exchange also uh, with broader uh, groups of, of companies, um, you see it here. Um, the, the key difference is really that implementation has been here prioritized as the top um, challenge um, because it's really here about executing in an IT or a business project how we can get the ideas implemented. Uh, often we are stuck more on the planning side and um, and it's it 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 lacks the the, the execution um, agility and and elements. Um, so this is the difference to that voting here. But usually this is these are the two things: measurement and implementation are usually switching depending which group we are asking that question. But it's also important to understand the challenge to then find uh, right methodologies, partners uh, to support on that journey. Um, so let me bring you on, on the journey for SAP. And as strategy and vision has been placed uh, from you as the top challenge, I want to share our vision, um, which, uh, which is something what is really important to formulate when we embark on, on, on that journey to carry also the people with us um, because every transformation comes with change um, and there is a huge risk of resistance in the organization of change. It's the human behavior. And that's why um, a clear strat strategy and vision is super important to place um, and communicate on a regular basis and incorporate into every activities um, within the company's culture. And in our case, SAP, it's helped the world run better and improve people's lives. You might heard it already, um, but it's really a, a kind of a messaging which we are constantly living up in SAP. And it's important that the people get, um, and the, our employees um, are fully integrated in whatever we are doing on our daily activities. If we are on the IT side, if we are on development side, if we are on the business finance HR side, um, that we have all the same vision. And this was not always the case. Um, and we used really uh, people surveying on a regular basis to also understand how our employees, when we formulated it, um, um, buying into it, um, because on this is a, a very important pulse check throughout the transformation journey, and it helped us a lot to really then uh, tweak certain activities and prioritize certain activities to have our people um, behind 
um, our company goals, especially in our uh, in our environment where we don't produce goods. Um, our most precious goods are our employees, and that's why it's also important to have them with with us on that journey. With that, I would like to um, go one level deeper because um, improving people's lives, what does it mean? What is the concrete strategic goal we want to embark in, uh, in SAP? It's the number one enterprise application and business AI company. Um, and this is super important because you voted also the top challenge around measurement. This is something what you see on the bottom and we are um, educating and incorporating our employees into it um, to really understand how our daily uh, activities in our job functions will support us in becoming number one in market share, customer satisfaction, lifetime, and adoption. Um, because those are the things we want to um, measure outcomes towards these strategic goals, obviously also into others. Um, but this is something what um, started really on the top goal level, uh, bringing more quantitative aspects into a strat um, strategic definition. And the further we cascade down in SAP, we are obviously ending up in operational KPIs, in process KPIs, um, but it's also something important that it starts from a common story, um, a common messaging, which is also in SAP one of the success drivers that we have our e entire um, executive board behind that um, um, behind our strategy. Let me quickly pause here because I had uh, I have not done that um, disabling function and I need to do it because it constantly pings me. I'm sorry for that. Um, in the meanwhile, just looking into the chat in case there are any questions so far, I'm happy to answer them as we are moving ahead. So I see the chat got enabled. Okay, so in case you have any questions to while we are moving to the slides, um, we don't need to wait all the way to the end in terms of the Q&A. Uh, please paste uh, your questions into the chat and we are going to pick it up throughout that session. Okay, um, with that, let me jump on the next overview. And um, this is something um, which we didn't have from the beginning of our transformation journey, but it helps us also to um, bring the complexity of transformation um, into a more structured overview on what can it be and what is needed to achieve it. So what you see is here a graph. Um, the graph on the on the lower axis talks about the market impact from internal to external. Um, and then on the left-hand side, the other axis talks about the organization change uh, from low to high. And what you see here is two um, character types of transformation. Um, I'm starting with the first one, which is digital transformation. Many of you heard um, it has a more technology-driven transformation still with the customer focus. Um, and what you see here is in the middle of that circle is the, the, the outcomes, what you can achieve with the digital transformation from prioritizing your investments, um, obviously creating also synergies around processes as we are connecting and, and uh, processes and, and business areas, drive for higher stakeholder satisfaction, uh, productivity, all the way to accelerated revenues and new pricing. Um, here, um, what is super, super critical is to get a C-level buy-in. Um, so in this case, for instance, a finance transformation um, is a good example for that, um, where then a CFO or an executive um, is supporting that, that, that transformation element. And what, um, from our learning, what, what takes us to, to achieve this is really from starting to break silos, it's not a purely um, in this example, a finance topic, it also impacts upstream and downstream processes. So 
digital transformation helps also to break silos. Um, it's about redesigning the processes. And so not do continuously do what you need to do, um, but rethink the way you do it. And for us in SAP, um, technology helped us to um, as the questions were like what additional new technologies we can use or what has to be substituted, um, that it helped us to challenge the status quo. We wouldn't have um, um, challenged it by ourselves as the business areas sit in very, very comfortable in their positions, but the, the, the technology questions helped us to, to re-question if the processes we have lived for, for years make sense or if we need to really rethink the way how certain activities are done and help us also to shift our focus away from purely internal facing processes more to customer focused processes. And there it helps significantly to reprioritize where the attention should go. Um, another element, what you see here also in this outer circle is about harmonizing data. Because when you think of breaking silos and connecting processes, it's not just a process view. A very super, very critical uh, over, um, component is the data uh, in this element, because as we are connecting um, the views, you see how, red how many redundancies of data had been occurred over the years. And this is about then harmonizing um, the data and building up a, a, a one data model. Um, Left-hand side, I talked about it, which is the technology element. It, it's, it's a super critical enabler, was a super critical enabler for us uh, to drive these things. And, and this is something what is often underestimated, but very, very important. Uh, we went also on our own journey to it, is the topic around change management. So driving change practices is one of the key learnings what we see in our transformation, not to do it close to a go live with Delta trainings and so on, but starting to build change practices from the beginning. We saw it from your voting of challenges around strategy. This is the perfect starting point. We in SAP, we used even employee feedback to shape um, the, 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 the strategy um, and, the, and the, the content around it. And this is something to include employees through the change uh, to the change process because transformation has not a start and an end. It's an ongoing cycle. And with that, it comes also from an executive level all the way to employee level that we are living um, and driving change practices through it. You see this digital transformation is more on the left-hand side of this graph because it, from its organizational uh, change impact, um, has it is more on a lower side um, because you're still in potentially in a dedicated line of business or a more broader one. Um, but the one what drives the biggest could drive the biggest disruption in a company is um, a more company-wide transformation. Um, and in this case, it it you can achieve really on the market impact much much bigger. Um, achievements, which is really expanding your portfolio, uh, driving new revenue streams, you're entering even into new markets, you expand the brand value. Um, and you see here also in the middle uh, terms like end-to-end -end is, is, is super critical, um, scalable end-to-end -end operations, not just from one line of business, but really throughout the company. Um, and that requires obviously a, a, com a more different approach when it comes to organization change uh, as it has a, a significant organization change impact. Um, and for that, and this is what helped us a lot, as I mentioned, the entire board, executive board was behind and is still behind the company transformation. And, um, and this is one of the key successes, what, what we see executive um, commitment throughout the entire journey, because there are a lot of decisions to be made um, on different levels, and it requires uh, a full commitment around it. On the outer circles again, um, and there you see also on the right-hand side, the strategic North Star um, articulated um, overhaul of the entire operating model. In our case, it was really the go-to-market, the R&D and the corporate functions to also rethink if certain potential functions had to be an organization centralized or decentralized is a key discussion. Um, working with new business models and pricing models to enter new markets. Um, we have done significant efforts in standardizing our process landscape. So process management as a methodology became for us very, very critical as a common 
or practice which we elevated from an operation level up to a more strategic level. And um, within SAP, we're using process as the common language, the neutral language between business and IT to really drive these um, business outcomes. So it's not just a pure technology or system conversation, but really a, a process conversation. Value management is super, super critical to capture it because um, it, it is something uh, which drives also the prioritization of the investments and also the accountability, both on the business and the IT side to clearly articulate what is what is then the expected uh, value, what we gain with investments into technologies or business uh, uh, activities. Um, on the left-hand side, you see here also the data model. Uh, so from the left-hand side, purely harmonizing data, this means really establishing a unified data model, which was for us key and is key um, to, to drive. It's an ongoing effort. You're operating on an open heart. I, I'm always saying uh, while we are redesigning and transforming processes, also new data elements are coming in. And especially in the context of AI, this data element is one of the critical elements which has been constantly cleared and constantly monitored and improved in order to then drive um, obviously values out of AI and other technologies uh, through it. And you see it further going up. Uh, innovation is a is a huge topic. I mentioned just AI um, and the cultural element. Um, so companies who are very long uh, already uh, at the market um, require also what we also see on on SAP side a rethink of uh, cultural values. Are the credos, are the values what have been established in the beginning, the same ones we want to have um, in the beginning as well, uh, continue to have it? Or is this something where certain values have to come in? For SAP, as an example, um, one of the key elements is the end-to-end -end mindset. So it's something what we want to integrate and um, into uh, the company's culture. And it's something what had, um, had to be re-established in the cultural um, elements. So going to the next one, and this is something what I want to share with you in terms of success drivers on, on the transformation, top level sponsorship. Um, back then when the transformation had been kicked off in SAP, our strongest sponsorship was the COO. Back then Christian Klein and his COO function and continuously now along the entire executive board as the transformation projects in SAP, as we are talking about the company-wide transformation, usually spanning across at least two or three um, business functions to it. Um, so that's why this sponsorship is critical to drive the right decisions on the one hand, but also aligned um, priorities. Um, so when it comes to then IT portfolio execution or budget allocations that we um, driving towards the same strategic outcomes to it. Um, the second one, which I haven't um, touched yet, um, but it is something what we learned out of our journey. And when we are exchanging also with companies across the globe, um, is the big discussion how much uh, central versus decentral governance is needed um, on, a, on a transformation journey. For us, what helped a lot in the beginning was um, to centralize a lot. So we had a very centralized governance approach in place to mobilize the right experts in the company um, to get a full picture and one single source of, of, of communication. But throughout the, our journey, we, are, we started to decentralize and empower the business again and, and find really common uh, accountabilities. But this is something which depends very um, much on um, the company's culture and company structure. So we have also companies who are going a full decentralized approach through it. Um, but in general, it's something what has to be rethought from the beginning of a transformation program. That's our learning. Otherwise, everyone runs in a different direction and uh, methodologies and approaches are inconsistently executed. And especially as we are touching multiple business areas at the same time, it's important to, to drive the same um, language. And for us as a good example is um, with process management as an example, 
with Signavio, with Lina X, with um, S4, we, we try to really build up common standards across the company where everyone uh, follows and to drive then really scalable operations end to end. And then the third one, and then I'm picking up on the chat. Um, I think there was a hint. Um, the topic, what I mentioned also earlier, process, um, and I cannot repeat it uh, uh, a lot um, or not often enough, is um, the role of process in, a, in our transformation was significant. Why? Um, it's the one and only connector between business and IT. Um, and it's something what we see also recently in our SAP um, structure, uh, as I mentioned, where we are belonging to, uh, that our uh, corporate IT function had been also renamed to process and IT to elevate the importance and the strategic importance of process in a in a transformation and build up also this glue between business and IT to drive business outcomes, yeah, and not seeing it purely as an, an IT execution engine. Um, and this is really one of, let's say, the game changers we have experienced in our own transformation um, because it helped to bring knowledge from what is sitting with the peop in, in people heads in, 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 in departments on a platform, uh, on a unified uh, single source in order to drive multiple activities from it. On the one, one hand side, purely visibility and transparency, how processes are executed in a company, but also it served for us for change management, for trainings, for testing, um, um, and further on also to build up new price models to see on which foundations we are building and to drive on a regular basis continuous improvements um, out of these uh, processes. Because when, a when you have the baseline of knowing how your processes are running, you can build technologies, additional technologies on it, um, if it's mining or AI, to develop certain further improvements. And then you can support the strategic goals around um, co cost efficiencies, standardization, adherence to standards, and so on. Looking quickly now as I, uh, on that hand which was raised, not sure Larissa if you can see it, or was it just by accident a hand which got I raised? I saw it, but uh, I can't see it now, so I assume it was an accident. Okay, just checking, are there any questions in the chat so far? Not yet, but I can only encourage our participants to drop the questions via Q&A tool. Okay, perfect. Good. So um, what I've prepared for you, and I'm not going through every single detail now, um, a, a quick learning uh, learning fact sheet uh, from our own transformation, struck some of these things you heard from me, um, others you will see here um, a little bit in more detail. Three categories, what you see, strategy to execution, the people aspect, but also organization and governance. The left-hand side, I talked about board engagement already, um, but also on the left-hand side, what you see here um, is the topic of um, the centralization of our IT portfolio investments, which we have done in SAP. It helped us a lot to show transparency on the investments. On the other hand side, to drive a more structured approach on um, decision and prioritization uh, based on values and outcomes. And it, it also changed the engagement between business and IT uh, significantly. Um, so this is what some a practice and a methodology we are using now the last years uh, very successfully. Um, on the bottom, what you see is, and I talked about the four dimensions, and I want to repeat it one more time, the four dimensions around process, systems, data, and people. Um, when we have a business vision and a company strategy, for us in SAP, what was very important derived from there a holistic enterprise architecture roadmap. Uh, because also an architecture roadmap takes years to be executed um, and implemented. It requires prioritization, obviously, which tools are needed, but it, it mirrors the from, from the business side also the architecture view to it. Um, and this is something where we are very closely across the teams of process um, and data working with enterprise architects as a uh, very strategic and important role um, to make this uh, intersection working. 
On the people side, as I mentioned, the change management aspect, it's the continuous feedback loops, what we are doing through um, employee surveys and also other feedback loops uh, on activities, initiatives, um, which is uh, important. The end-to-end -end, um, um, process mindset, um, also process as well as the end-to-end -end mindset is very critical to be integrated in every project to look, looking up upfront and um, downstream what certain behaviors or tasks I as a person executing might impact my other colleagues. Uh, we are working very um, much around the topic of learning and individual development. So learning in a, in a, in a time of constant change is important to, to empower our employees on being agile of change and have the right um, tools at hand and being enabled both on soft skills and hard skills uh, to cope with that, um, but also to understand their, strat uh, their contribution to, to the strategy, uh, which also is then linked, obviously, to our bonus framework um, to, to have really the, the, the clear link on it. On the right-hand side, and this might be um, specific to SAP, but also we see it in exchanges also with other companies, um, we have done a lot of organization changes, not just in a project mode, because we truly believe that these are things which have to be on a more sustainable way established and not just in a project mode. Um, the neutral instance, so looking for a neutral instance in the company which can support and drive transformation, which is not necessarily sitting in a line of business and creates potential conflicts. But what we have also done is um, we have merged a lot of functions and centralized functions. So one example is really the process owners out of the business units. We have merged and centralized them into one function and currently with process and IT. Um, we have also um, centralized our data analytics owners um, because you saw it also on the bubble slide um, a harmonized, a unified data model is very critical to enable and transformation. And for that, we wanted to have our people under one organizational umbrella to drive that the data model. And that still um, uh, persists. Um, and this is something just for you. Um, I think there will be a handout from that presentation also for you to incorporate into your uh, daily activities on your transformation journey. Um, but we wanted to also equip you with some more tangible learnings into it if you're interested to um, share with us your practices uh, from your companies um, or go into an exchange with us happy to do so um, drop me just a, uh, an email or, or to our transformation at sap and we are eager to also share in more detail um, our learnings with you with that i would like to pause here and um, stop sharing and looking into the chat uh, and handing over Larissa to you. All right, thank you, uh, Monica. Thank you for these insights. Um, I can't see questions in Q&A tool or in the chat. However, there are some questions that arrived earlier um, as we are working closely with uh, SAP user groups. Um, there are a lot of discussions uh, around transformation topic and uh, transformation projects. And uh, for example, uh, one question that is raised very often is uh, how to manage to get uh, buy-in and sponsorship from the board. So um, how how to make it so convincing that they will commit on this? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. And we get it also a lot from our customer exchanges. Um, on the one hand, and I mentioned it in the beginning of SAP's transformation, uh, the topic of transformation was on the board agenda on, on the eight week, every eight weeks um, to really discuss. So the board put a lot of attention in it. Um, but we had the sponsor of the COO back then, yeah, to bring in this agenda to it. Um, in the meanwhile, we are now on a um, on a different cadence, but still, uh, yeah, um, at least once a quarter, and it depends on the project. But the more tangible thing, what we have done is every transformation program has at least one board sponsor. That's a requirement what we have established, and in pro transformation programs which span 
multiple things, we have even co-sponsorship. So at least to find uh, a sp the sponsor and, and nominate it, it's, one, it's something what our board is also um, buying in. So that would be my advice on that. All right, thank you for that. Okay, let's assume we have this strong uh, sponsorship uh, and buy-in from the board, but we have a project uh, and want to be successful, but uh, what are, which roles are really crucial for, for the success of a transformation project? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and here we have also done throughout our, our journey, a lot of learnings on new roles established or even strengthened uh, roles. Um, so it starts with program management. Um, and in this case, we do um, a co-ownership. Um, um, we have a business program manager and an IT uh, program manager um, linked to it um, so that we have really the translation um, in it. Um, Building up these programs uh, um, created for us also the opportunity to reformulate and set expectations on accountabilities because transformation brings also new accountabilities or shifted accountabilities in it. So as important a role, it's also to formulate the, res the, the accountability, the scope of work and clearly communicating and lining it with the business units. The other one, the other roles, um, I mentioned the enterprise architect, um, which is a very critical role to translate the, the, the business objectives into the more IT view on it. We had also so-called transformation or end-to-end -end roles, um, um, which were important. Um, we heard measurement as a key challenge. So we have also finance controllers in it who help to translate us into also tangible um, outcomes and make sure that we are uh, tracking them on a regular basis. Um, one of the roles, what we have underestimated in the beginning, um, but is um, has a um, now in the in the in the programs a permanent role is the change lead role. Um, it's something what usually is having the lowest priority, but it's something what we learned has to be there from the beginning, from the this uh, business conversation, from the strategic um, conversations. Um, so the change role. Um, so those would be now, let's say. The full one. Not everyone has to be hundred percent, except the program managers, uh, hundred percent throughout the life cycle in there. So it's a little bit of yeah balancing of the efforts. But those were like the most um, critical roles, um, as well as the delivery IT delivery manager, who then translated also into sprint uh, activities and so on. Um, and what we see, especially in these transformation programs, is that. Uh, the program manager as such, who is responsible for the scope and the budget right on time on budget, um, requires someone who has a more transformation and business context to it. So that's where this end-to-end -end roles and transformation roles come in, because this is the role who drives the conversation with the business, prioritize, has a business acumen, understands how this has to be translated into a, a broader scope, because this is a too overwhelming responsibility for a program manager itself. That's our learning here. All right. Um, okay, so you have this huge transformation project, uh, but at the end to achieve the result is all about people. So how would you reach out to people? Because especially from this change management perspective. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so one example, what we have done uh, in the early stage, um, having the regular feedback loops um, with employee surveys is super, super critical and not just once a year. We have done it once a year. I think it leaves too much time in between what could happen, um, but we do it uh, multiple times a year. It gives us a better pulse on activities what are happening and in that case for instance also the understanding of our strategy was not clear from the beginning so it gave us also indication to formulate the strate strategy and the vision more precise um, and there we involved employees in shaping it so making them integral part of the change you saw it also from the learnings we had also people from the business and IT joining these transformation programs staffed out of different functions. So making the diversity as a topic um, helps really to have the people who are living the challenges and uh, the, the, the potentials of improvements every day um, 
part of shaping the future was super critical for us. Why? On the one hand side, we had the best talents yeah, in these strategic transformation programs. And on the other hand side, those were for us the multipliers, the early adopters who bring it then back into their organizations mm -hmm. to support trainings, to support um, um, info sessions and so on, right? Um, then doing it in a more isolated way. So that helped us a lot um, as, a, as a practice. We do have also an appreciation tool to really appreciate um, silo breaking activities when teams across departments work together as a very yeah, tangible topic. Change management is a very, very complex topic um, right. and it starts from management uh, yeah, and goes all the way to employees. Um, so we have also our board regular um, and executive uh, members um, and, and SVPs regular doing coffee corner sessions regular updates, ask me anything uh, sessions where employees can ask whatever bothers them concretely to a business topic. That helps a lot. So uh, change is not once communicating in an email or being on the stage. It's a permanent present. Um, as we see, this change is constantly occurring. And on the other hand side, one of the focus for this year, um, which have been elevated up, is the topic of learning, right? Uh, offer our um, our employees because this is for us the the like i said um the the golden good uh, we don't produce um equipping them with knowledge how to cope with that change um and what we see here is also that the soft skill aspect comes more and more into play not just the hard uh, skills around technology obviously as well yeah because in our environment technology is constantly changing but soft skills around mm -hmm. communication teamwork, how to manage uh, conflicts, how to manage change is something what 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 we see also uh, growing. All right, thank you for that. Thank you for these insights. Obviously very important to allocate uh, time for these activities for for the uh, in the transformation projects. So, I can't see more questions in the chat. Also not via Q&A tool with this I assume that uh, this uh, session was informative, uh, sufficiently in informative, and the PDF will be also available as usually in the description to the recording. And I will share the link with all the registrants um, this week. With this, again, thank you, Monica, for being our speaker, for being with us. And thank you to all the um, uh, participants who joined us today. Um, the, we will have the uh, session next week and uh, it will be on the 28th of uh, May. And the topic for this session will be around um, clean core. So for those who are uh, eager to understand the uh, yeah, the concept behind clean core and even more important why it's so essential uh, for, for ERP in the cloud. So please join us next week. As usually, we will send a reminder on Monday. And with this, I think you are equipped now with all the necessary information. Thank you and bye-bye. Thanks everyone, bye.